All right, so how do you get from this beautiful Illinois corn to this 10% alcohol, 90% gasoline? Well, let me show you. First, the actual corn on the corn cob, right? Once it's dried in the fields, the weight of this entire stalk, half of it is right here. Stalk. So once we have the corn, the nice dried corn, the next thing we need to do is we need to crush it. It's got some that's already off of the cob. There we go. Corn. Crushing. Yeah, this is gonna take a long time. All right, but hey, if you have a machine, you got some patience, right? You can actually get this stuff um, all crushed up into, you know, cornmeal. All right, so the next step after you get your crushed corn is you need to mix it with water and yeast. You see, we're gonna take the starch in the corn and we're going to have the yeast eat it. Turns out that the yeast byproduct, the yeast waste product, is alcohol. I have conveniently in the past taken my crushed corn, water, and yeast, and let this sit for, you know, a couple months. You have to worry that it also makes carbon dioxide. You gotta let go of the gas out of your bottles now and then. You need to hide this from the government if you're not going to pay taxes and plan to sell it. All right, and we have these nice buried jars of corn mash. This has stopped fermenting because the alcohol content has gotten up high enough to actually kill the yeast. Maybe 12% alcohol, somewhere in that range. Of course, 12% alcohol is like wine, and nobody wants to drink wine instead of moonshine. So the next step is distillation. We're gonna take this uh, alcohol corn mixture, and try to pour out the liquid. Some people might call it yummy. And now, we're gonna put it on a source of heat. Charcoal works nicely when you're outside. The key in here is that water boils at 100 degrees centigrade. Alcohol boils at 78. So, if I heat this carefully, the first vapor that comes out of it will be the vaporized alcohol. The reason this whole process works is that alcohol boils at a lower temperature than water. Water boils at 100 C, alcohol, ethyl alcohol, at 78. If we carefully heat up this mixture, the first vapor that comes off will be the alcohol. Now you've often seen stills and they always have some metal contraption like this on it. And there's a very good reason for that. I need to cool that vapor back down until it turns into a liquid. And then a copper heat exchange coil just with the air going past it will do that very effectively. So I'm gonna set up now my little jar in which I hope to collect the alcohol that is being distilled from this fermentation process. So this distillation process only gets you up to about 50% alcohol. 100 proof. Have you ever wondered why when you buy liquor in a grocery store or a liquor store, it's only 100 proof, 80 proof, which is 150%, maybe 40% alcohol? That's because once through simple distillation, it's about as good as you can do. Of course, you're not going to take this little bit of 50% alcohol 
and put it into your car. You might put it into your whiskey bottle. Over here, I have some genuine East Tennessee corn squeezings, moonshine. Got this from a friend at a laboratory down there. If you do this at home, don't. You can get methyl alcohol distilled off, wood alcohol it's called, and that makes you go blind, all right? Don't distill your own moonshine. If you really want moonshine, buy it. So, clearly this stilling, distillation is the first step in making 100% ethanol. You have to take this stuff, this stuff, and in a very controlled condition, not a charcoal grill and a rubber tube, you need to distill it again. You distill it again, you can get all the way up to 95% alcohol. But you know 95% alcohol, Everclear, 191, that stuff still is not good enough to run in your automobile. It's still 5% water. You're not gonna fill up your gas tank with 10 gallons of uh, fuel and then throw in a half gallon of water, right? So the last steps in making 100% pure ethanol is a chemical process with a drying agent. Finally, you can get the 100% alcohol and then you mix it with gasoline and you get an extremely potent, extremely energetic, very capable fuel. If you think about it, just a few ounces can move a giant bus or truck many miles. Another thing about uh, gasoline and gasohol is it's extremely explosive. So much so that I normally don't even try to blow it up, but you know, I gotta blow up something, so. Yum. <laughs>